Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm of course Big Vale, and in today's video, I'm going to show you everything you need to know about Super Archer blimps. It's the star of the show, the Super Archer. 156 DPS, 600 hit points, but none of that's all that relevant, guys. Because what really matters, and it's not mentioned anywhere on the card, is that it's got a initial range of six tiles but then the arrow flies for a further six tiles beyond that. That is what makes the Super Archer Blimp so special. This is something I get asked about a lot, and I mean a lot. So guys, in real simple terms, it's going to be invis. Maybe you'll need a second invis as well before you clone. That's if your filler troops are still hovering around. Um, you know, the Warbreakers may have got caught in a NATO, for example. Then you clone. Then you rage, and then another invis, and just keep invising until you run out, making sure that you're leaving approximately four seconds in between deploying each invis spell. So my recommendation for your CC contents is going to be three invis spells. That's kind of standard across the board. You want to have either two super archers and one super whiz, or three super archers. Now, the reason why you may want to deviate and have the Super Wizard in there as well is um, if you've got anything like immediate value wise, so you're landing the blimp really close to the Town Hall or an Eagle or anything really that's got great chain value against it, that one Super Wizard under Rage can work wonders and allow the Super Archers to go off and target things a little bit further away. Now three Super Archers or two Super Archers and a Super Wizard is nowhere near enough to fill a Town Hall 15 or even a Town Hall 14 clan castle. So why do we not fill them up with Archers or Wizards? Well, simple really guys, you need fillers in that CC. What you can see on your screen right now is the Super Archers triggering giant bombs immediately as soon as they spawn from that blimp which essentially weakens them enough to make them one-shottable from most defenses. If you do bring fillers in the clan castle with you, that's going to allow you that little bit of a buffer that's going to allow your troops to trigger the traps before your super archers or your super archers and wizard do come out of the blimp. And at that point, they will be fresh, they'll be ready to go, they'll have taken no damage, and that means they are a little bit more flexible and you don't have to be quite so hot on with your invis spells to keep them alive. And of course, as you can see guys, it also will all but guarantee you get the results you're looking for. When it comes to prioritization of targets, for me, the Town Hall is always the primary. And the only exception to that is if there's no other value in the area. So the reason for that, of course, is that you don't want to be wasting a load of invis, your blimp, clones, etc. to take down one building plus a few other secondary buildings when you could have just got them with a hero sui. So if the town hall is surrounded by other high value structures like your monolith, inferno, scatter shots, then by all means the town hall and anything around it should be your priority. If not, if the town hall is isolated, I personally and this depends on the follow-up army you're going with. I like Lalo, so for me, Scatters and Multis are the main threat. I personally prefer to go for Scatter Shots and Multi Infernos. You can choose your own priorities, of course, depending on what the follow-up army is. I would say try and get as much value of the blimp as possible, regardless of whether that includes the Town Hall or not. Now, it's really rare that you will want to send a blimp without any kind of tanking. So you've got two options, either a Hound or Loons and a Warden. Now, sometimes the Hound doesn't quite work out. You can see here the air defense was kind of isolated on the outside, didn't offer the blimp much tanking. We crashed and burned, didn't get the Town Hall. Here, we've got the Hound. Again, it's a short journey, but we want a shorter journey for the blimp too. So while it's a risk, it's a risk that's kind of calculated and one that more often than not you can get away with. My preferred method is actually to use balloons and to follow it up with a warden and the warden ability at the last possible moment. That gets you value from the balloons, but also guarantees protection for that blimp, working through pretty much as far as you want into the base. And you can get insane value through that method. 
Now what I mean about remove distractions is that these super archers can sometimes get hung up on things that aren't really that relevant, i.e. hounds and defending heroes. A simple way to deal with a defending CC is when you send your blimp in, drop an archer just on the verge and that will pull any ground targeting CC away from the area, leaving your archers free to do what they want. As for heroes, this one's really simple guys. You just drop your invis and make sure that you're covering the defending hero with that invisibility spell. The archers will completely ignore it. Likewise, the hero will ignore the archers. They will live on in blissful ignorance of each other. Now, blimp placement is actually really important, guys. It helps you to take advantage of that extra six tile range of those arrows once they've gone past the initial six targeted tiles. So those additional six tiles, they are completely untargeted, uncontrolled. They will continue on wherever the archers have left off shooting. So you want to try and get it so the archers are lined up to take out as much additional value as possible. By lining the archers up properly, that could mean the difference between not taking out too much, but still getting decent value and getting insane value, including potentially even a scatter shot that's really, really wide in the base. Now that's an opportunity that I guarantee you, you don't want to miss out on. There's two different styles of clone deployment that I'm going to show you in this video. The first that I'm going to show to you is single spot deployment. So you can see I've dropped both of them in the same spot. That's when you want to concentrate the fire from those super archers from one specific location on the map. They'll all fire at roughly the same target, and that'll just really concentrate the fire that you get from them. The next one is actually going to be about spreading the clones. So you may have done it with cloned blimps with balloons in the past, but when it comes to super archers, if you find that your blimp lands because it's caught in a nado a little bit too far away from your main value that you're looking for, you can start to deploy those clones a little bit closer to the main target so you can see in this case we're going for the scatter shots and that's going to give us more of a chance of taking out both of those scatters and really realizing the value that we essentially intended to get in the first place you probably gathered that using two clones is my preference but there is also another option to use one clone more invis and an extra rage now where that really comes into its own is if you've got multiple targets in different directions to fire at, it gives you a longer period of time having just one clone but more invis to really realize the value. So here you can see if we'd have had a double clone, we may not have had a chance at getting the town hall here. Single clone gave us a little bit more of an edge in this scenario. Since this specific type of blimp doesn't allow you the additional housing space for poison, we have another weapon in our arsenal, and that is the Electro Titan. 32 housing space can wreck pretty much any CC you throw at it. Just look at what it does to this Ice Hound. It's absolutely insane. It'll do it to pretty much any CC you put it up against. Just as importantly as the Blim, we also have to focus on the Sui. So your King, your Queen, and your Royal Champion. So, while your Super Archer Blimp will get an initial punch into the base, and in this case you can see it's got an awful lot of value, you need to pick the right location to send your King and Queen. And for me, the general rule that I tend to follow with this is to make sure that my King and Queen are going to be able to clear up as much as possible without facing an insane amount of resistance. Don't get me wrong, we want to take out some kind of defensive value, in this case, we're looking to try and clear out the entire 9 through to 12 and then move in towards the upper scatter shot. Because I follow my attacks up with a Lalo, I don't really want to have to go up against the scatter, especially without having the, uh, the benefit of a Warden to protect my wounds going against it. So you can see my Lalo is moving in at the same time as the Sui. It's another important lesson to learn. Don't wait until your series ended before continuing on with the next phase of the attack. At best you'll get a time fail, at worst you're essentially leaving your main army kind of isolated, you're leaving it without any kind of support. So here you can see I've got my balloons moving in, we've got the queen doing her thing, taking out the scatter, the king, he's pretty much gone, 
but the RC is now joining in with the loons. So this sort of moves me on very briefly to my next sort of thought. It's around follow-up armies. And honestly, my general rule for this is, as long as it's a relatively competent army that you're comfortable using, and it doesn't rely too heavily on spells, you can pretty much use it whatever you want, guys. Don't restrict yourselves, have some fun with this, and try out a few different army comps. Now when it comes to a Super Archer Blimp, or even a Blizzard for that matter, there's only two spell towers that really matter. There's Poison and Invis. So when it comes to a Poison spell tower, as long as you can keep your Archers or your Super Wizards or whatever invisible, the Poison Towers will not fire. They have to be exposed to the towers for, I believe it's something like two seconds. But if you allow that to happen, the poison's gonna get flung and your troops are gonna die. You can see here, I'm keeping them constantly invisible and it's allowing them to get all of the value that I could possibly have wanted from them. So um, yeah, nice and easy. As for the invis towers, there's not so much you can do about them, unfortunately. So you can freeze them to stop them going off, but Honestly, you may as well just let them roll. As long as you've got enough invis, as long as you've got the blimp close enough to your main target, the super archers will keep themselves busy while that main target's invisible, and they should be able to go back to it and take it out with relative ease. So you've seen how powerful this blimp is and how much damage it can do to pretty much any base type. But I just wanted to highlight to you a certain type of base that does stand up fairly well to it. So you can see here a couple of features. Isolated Town Hall, we've got pretty well spread out DPS throughout the base, so no matter where you drop your blim, you're not going to take out all of that insane DPS value within the base. So um, yeah, I mean, it's still possible to 3-star it, but it'll defend better than a lot of different bases that you'll see. So as well as setting up a decent base type, you can also look at a different kind of CC to defend against it. And here we've got an Electro Titan CC. You can see the Electro Titan walks out and it is just absolutely melting our Super Archers. And there we have it, guys. Hopefully you've enjoyed the video. Hopefully it's enlightened you. So if you have and if it has, please do smash the like button. Also, let me know in the comments if there's anything that you think I might have missed. I feel it's quite comprehensive, but you never know. And of course, if you don't already, please do subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications to be made aware when I go live or when I post new videos in the future. I do one or the other pretty regularly, so there's always going to be fresh content on the channel. Until next time, much love. Big Veil is out.